The third phase is I'll actually start releasing the angelic canopy or the angelic atmosphere, the angelic sound. There's dimensions that you can open up in, in, in the angelic within three weeks, and then there's six weeks, and there's 10 weeks, and then so on. Well, this is incredible. I'm, I'm just going to give a quick introduction about yourself, and we're just going to go in it. Fiorella Giordano, she is a revivalist, as I said earlier. I'm always encouraged uh, to see other women of God who are rising, revivalist, evangelist, and, uh, you know, you're a prophetic uh, intercessor, you're a blogger, you're a writer. Uh, some of the insights and the things that the Lord gives you is quite phenomenal, very detailed. Uh, but uh, it's been great knowing you, uh, being a friend. And uh, also, well, I'm, I'm just remembering, I was wearing this jacket when we ministered together in Santa Maria at the healing rooms. And you know what? I was actually getting kind of cold, and I was going to wear my, the green one that I wore. <laughs> oh, that's weird. so funny. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Funny. Prophetic, weird stuff. Anyways, nothing's a yep. quiz for the people of God. So uh, you're over there in Dallas, Texas, and I, I want to talk about uh, the glory of an intercessor. We're ending this whole four days of glory broadcast uh, with you, uh, woman of God. And, uh, you know, what comes to your mind uh, when we think and talk about the glory of an intercessor or, you know, uh, the rewards of an intercessor? You know, I think it all comes to that place of birthing what you see in prayer. I think that um, that's what the glory of the intercessor is, is about in the sense yeah. that you see something in the spirit, you see it in God, and you bring it into the earth through prayer and intercession, through the groanings, through travailing. Um, you know, decreeing, all of that is part of intercession, is part of prayer, and prayer is what manifests it. So I believe that not every intercessor gets to see the reward of what they pray wow. for fully, but um, I think that we're entering into seasons of acceleration where we're going to be seeing a lot of our prayers being answered in ways and in um, timing that is beyond our own scope or imagination. Come on. Amen. Uh <laughs> Uh, how, how you said we, we you believe that we're in times and seasons of acceleration i believe that uh but you know there's so many people that are watching now or on the replay that have a long list of prayer requests you know and they're still praying and prophesying but you know how do we come into how, how do we come or how are we coming into the place of acceleration you know i think that the key is praying the lord's will I think that when we pray, when we're out of line or out of sync, even minutely on what the will of the Lord is, then we can't really birth um, the prophetic promise. Wow. We have to align. That's why God, you know, spends so much time purifying, pruning and all that so that we can come into alignment. And what we're praying is really his will. And then we can see the time of the Lord manifest because it says in Ephesians 1, that the fullness of time is in hand with his will, right? So his will is manifested in the fullness of time. Aside from that, there's no manifestation of his will. So time and his will oh. are connected. Time and his will is connected. <clears throat> and uh, I, I really uh, agree with what you said earlier, that uh, when we pray according to his will, not fighting against him, uh, then that's where we're going to see things birth. And, and every single one of you guys, God wants to see the things that he puts on your heart. He wants to see a birth more than you do. And, uh, you know, it is a process of continual surrender and sacrifice. And, uh, you know, I do believe that the Lord is wanting to birth in the season. We know, of course, it's 2019 Hebrew year 5779. Nine in the Hebrew, it means uh, tet, and it also is shaped like the womb of a woman. So I do believe that this is a birthing year. So uh, for you, Fee, uh, those people who are watching now and they're saying, I want to see the God-given dreams birth in me, even from now to the end of the year, what would your encouragement be for them? You know, I think that one, of, I have a few things, you know, a few keys and I guess encouragement, but it would be commitment. It would be discipline. It would be really to commit to the prayer, you know, the prayers that I see the answer the most and there is like zero margin of like no response from the Lord are the ones wow. that he um, speaks to me in dreams or in a prophetic encounter where he says, pray this. And it can be the simplest phrase into the most complex situation. And it's able to break off the warfare and actually manifest the promise. And I don't get those dreams a whole lot. You know, a lot of us 
I think are carrying prophetic promises in form of destiny, you know? Um, yeah. But then there's this place in God where he can really give you very strategic, focused prayers. Routine, and it can be good. a word that you can just release um, in a situation or it can be a decree. I mean, I'm telling you the simplest things. That's good. And, um, and God is able to break through the most complex situations in that way. Now, as far as birthing prophetic promises and birthing um, what you want to see in prayer, you know, it's really first alignment with the will of God, you know, um, any sort of selfish ambition, um, ab agenda, all of that factors into outside of the will of God. So you can't birth something if you're in that, in that place. So God wow. has to align your heart. But I think that um, another thing is, you know, really the tenacity of fasting and the tenacity of, um, and perseverance of not only, you know, going into the courts and praying, um, understanding the heavenly realm of prayer, but also really partnering with the spirit of God and really travailing in prayer to bring forth a manifestation. Because I think that we kind of get lost in this place where we, we don't fully follow through necessarily. We don't really know how to progress yeah. in, in the depth of prayer. You know, we might pray five minutes into something and just, you know, list off our prayer, um, our prayer list. But do we really, really tarry in that place of prayer where we're really birthing, um, you know, birthing your ministry, birthing your, your business, birthing um, the prophetic destiny of your family in a place of intercession where you're really tearing in the spirit and spending, I don't know, however long it takes in, in prayer um, as far as even just praying in the spirit. I tell my, my mentorship yeah. class. Praying in the spirit is the biggest key because you're uttering mysteries and you're partnering with the groan of God. And so that's bringing forth that's something good. that is beyond your own scope of necessity or desire of what you want to see or even fathom in God. God can bring it forth in his spirit and your mind just begins to catch on as God begins to give interpretation to what you're praying. And it may take weeks for you to figure out what you're actually saying in the spirit. Yeah. But who cares, right? God <clears throat> gives the interpretation. Come on, come on. God gives the interpretation, but he won't give it if there's not a praying people. Now, I, I, I want to go back to this big T word. You said something that most of us millennials don't really know. Uh, that big T word is tearing, you know, and of course, <laughs> tearing, you know, it stands for, you know, lingering in the presence, you know, just abiding in the presence, pressing in with no agenda except seeking his face rather than his hand. And I, I really enjoyed uh, what you said earlier, which is, you know, selfish ambition and agendas cannot be birthed in the will of God. And I think, you know, so many of us, we come to the Lord, you know, with our own uh, desires and our own needs. And again, you know, uh, we're all selfish in some way, but, you know, we're like, oh, Lord, bless me with a car, bless me with a husband, bless me with a wife. You know, we got all these prayer lists and all of that. And the Lord loves that. He cares for it. But when we learn to partner with his will and when we choose to tarry and press in and crucify the flesh. And that's where we're going to see his power manifest. And all these things will be added onto you. And I'm sure for you, uh, Fee, you've probably seen uh, yourself, even as a living sacrifice, as you've said yes to the Lord and surrendered, he's blessed you so much more in return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has. There's always, he has a way of doing that, right? He has a way of going above and beyond what he, he's promised. You know, I, I wanted to, um, I don't know, can I, I just, sure, I just feel like God is breathing really, you know, we're, we're talking about birthing promises, birthing the, 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 your prayers, but um, I really feel the Lord in this season really breathing in birthing dimensions and realms of his presence um, through intercession. I feel that a lot of what we want to see in the miraculous, a lot of what we want to see in the glory realm, um, you know, I've been meditating a lot on, on the king of Israel um, that went to Elisha and he was coming against the, um, the king of Aram. And, and Elisha says that the, the arrow of victory was given yeah. to him, right? And so he was supposed to, and then he's given the arrows to strike the ground. So he shoots the arrow and then he, he's given the arrows to strike the ground and he only strikes three verses five or six times or seven times yeah. that would have given him the complete victory. And I've been in this place where... I believe that we're walking in such a um, in such a grace of just even the prophetic. You know, uh, revelation is abundant right now, that, yeah. and it's not as controversial necessarily as it was 10 years ago or 20 yeah. years ago when the prophetic movement was really, you know, 30 years ago when it was starting out. So 
um, as I was meditating on this, I feel that the, there's this place that we have to begin to steward the breakthrough because we're moving That's from a good. place where we're not only going to be birthing promises, but we're going to be birthing and, and, and stewarding the breakthrough. And so what sure, really is that, going that, to that, define that, us that, 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 as, a, as a bride is going to be not the not the sovereignty of God in a, in a divine moment of favor, but what will define us will actually be our tenacity and our perseverance in the face of breakthrough and favor. And as intercessors, we're going to have to shift gears um, in this place where what are we, because I think intercessors really know how to contend and how to engage the spirit realm in opposition. But okay. how do we move forward and steward um, in intercession and build in prayer in a sustainable realm for the breakthrough to fully manifest and actually move more into an apostolic dimension of intercession where we're actually building realm upon realm, okay. glory to glory, right? That's good. So yeah. that's just something that has been in my heart um, lately when it comes to prayer and intercession. That's awesome. Let's talk about that so much. Uh, uh, you, you talk from birthing to breakthrough to building. In fact, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I wrote a book called The Five Mantles of the New Breed, uh, talking about, and three of them, don't tell nobody, everybody who's watching, don't tell <laughs> nobody, three of them is, is exactly what you mentioned, the birthing anointing, the break, breaker anointing, and the building anointing. And mm -hmm. all of that is an, a process, even as you said, you know, we build realm upon realm, precept upon precept. And, uh, you know, I believe that the Lord wants to mantle every single person, not only to birth, uh, but and not only to break through because a lot of times breakthrough is birthing, but also to continue to build so that there'll be a momentum of glory. And I think uh, exactly what you said, Fee, a lot of people, that's where they kind of feel stuck is that you birth movements, but you're not a father to help father or mother that movement afterwards. And, uh, you know, I believe that God's shifting and changing the dynamic right now for longevity, not just for startup companies, but for longevity. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, something that we've heard so much and it's a wonderful phrase, but I think that we're entering into a different place right now is, you know, pray till it breaks. But I'm telling my people, you know, who, who I minister, where I minister, I'm like, don't pray till it breaks, pray till it's established. Because mm. if you don't, if you don't pray till it's established, then there is this, in this it's in this place of, um, it's not, um, it's not sealed necessarily in the spirit that there is still, um, a loophole, so to speak, where the enemy can, can, can come in or, or, or derail or sabotage or, or even ourselves, you know, that we just kind of let up the guard and, you know, and stop praying. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many times yeah. I've done meetings myself or done, gone on assignments and I went and I prayed and I broke through and then I didn't have my intercessors keep praying me through yeah. it. Exactly. And yep. then it, it just it just shut down. It collapsed. Right. How many times has that happened to so many people? Yep. And we have to train people to right. move into this place of establishing things in the spirit. It's good. And, um, you know, even timelines like, you know, whenever I get timelines, I tell people, I'm like, you have to intercede. Those 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 seasons don't just, you know, appear in the sky and just happen to manifest. They can. But many times they're meant to be brought into prayer and you're supposed to cover those those that dimension of time that appointed season in prayer releasing the angelic so it does what it's able to fully do and it's established in the spirit and it's not just a door but it actually becomes a building that's so good i really like what you said every single one of you we are called to intercede into our timelines our appointed times and seasons we all know that the sons of issachar you know sons of issachar they were intercessors why because they saw what was going in the heavenly realms they caught the appointed times, dates, seasons of what God was doing and here on earth. So therefore, they interceded and they prayed for breakthrough. And of course, the sons of Issachar, as you know, Fee, uh, they, they actually helped lead the army of Israel. They helped lead the armies of God because once they understood what was going on in the heavens, they had strategy to deploy here on earth. And I believe that God wants to give you strategy um, mm -hmm. as you have a schedule. So I, I, I want to talk about this real quick because you said that, Fee, uh, strategic and focused prayer. Strategic and focused prayer aligned with the heart, the will, the truth of God and his word. How, how does somebody uh, have strategic focused prayer like a battering ram to continue to see something broken 
And as we do that, we keep building. Um, I think that the biggest thing is, is decreeing. When you get a decree from heaven, there is a governmental authority on it. I mean, there's power in our words. There's power in every prophetic declaration. But there's something about the, about, about the authority when you hear actually something from the throne of God and you release it on the earth. That's good. It's not necessarily that you're engaging the spirit. You, can, you know, there's so many dimensions. You can engage by faith. You can decree and declare by faith. But when you actually go through the, this place of prayer where you present yourself to hear the counsel of the Lord, okay. um, then, then you are operating out of a different dimension and authority in the spirit because you, have been, you are standing as a witness on the earth that you have heard from heaven and you're speaking what you have heard. And there's actually a, a manifestation that comes around your life that backs that authority. And so it's much more... Um, effective in the spirit and you don't need to get a whole lot like i said one decree can shift the whole thing and then out of that decree you can work yourself in this place of speaking out of faith speaking out of declaration um, intercession praying in the spirit there's so many layers to prayer um you know mention and 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 even just even releasing the angelic through you know what i personally do is i get a decree and i decree it I actually go and I, 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 I engage the place of authority by faith in my spirit where I sit in the heavens and I decree yep. out of that place. And then when I decree, then I start, um, I, you know, I'll get my Bible out and I'll start finding every scripture that I can find that ties into that decree. I'll start speaking wow. scripture. Then the, the third phase is I'll actually start releasing the angelic canopy or the angelic atmosphere the angelic sound in in into the decree um and and i'll start vamping and strengthening the atmosphere by praying in the spirit okay. and travailing and tearing in prayer in the spirit that's how you have to understand that there's so many layers and you have to follow through in order to be able to break through that's so good because intercessors are people who are operating as a high priest and the priesthood of Melchizedek, you are operating from the throne room, not from the doomed room. You're operating from the heavenly place and you're seated with him. So we're actually not praying to him from here to there. We're praying with him and as him from there to here. And yeah. so that's incredible. And I want to talk about this because you, you, you touched on a, a very interesting subject the power, authority, ability to release angels, to back that thing up. Yep. And uh, is it biblical? Is it not? I'm sure there's so many people you've heard this in charismania world, worlds and terms. And, you know, how do we release angels? Do we have the authority to release angels to back up an assignment and a decree, a word from the Lord? And how do we do that, if so? Yeah, you know, Angels in scripture, it's said that they obey the word of the Lord. They, they, they connect to the word of God. So whether it comes out of the mouth of God or whether it comes out of your mouth, they, they are destined to and they're committed to bring that, that, that word into existence. And the only way that we, the place that we know that we see the angelic through scripture is around the throne of God. It's around places where people were either visited by, by the angelic or they were in a place of prayer. They're in a place of his presence. So we know that where his presence is, the angelic is. You know, you look through the book of Revelations where his presence is, the angelic is. So it's not really, um, you know, you have to look at the principles in scripture. It doesn't have to be spelt out. But if you understand the principles and the nature of God, then you can, step, you can begin to function in your heavenly assignment. And so I believe that angels will 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 um, will go forth with the decree of heaven and they're assigned to that decree now there is a place where you release a decree and the angelic will move but the fullness of the angelic assignment because there's a host we have to start thinking you know jesus had you know whenever he was before Pilate, he was said you know he had legions of angels at his disposal and he's a son yeah so imagine us as children of god okay he's the firstborn obviously, but we are, we are, we are co-heirs. And so we have the same assignment, the same angelic assignment around our lives. Now, Jesus had it fully manifested because he was walking in the fullness. Now we have the fullness promise, but we're not walking necessarily in the manifestation of that fullness. 
So the greater the glory Come on. in your life, the greater the purity in your life, the greater wow. the angelic release that wow. can obey the, the things that come out of your life because of the purity and the witness. Because we forget that, you know, the Holy Spirit was sent on Pentecost to release us as witnesses. Witnesses is a governmental um, courtroom dimension. So we are in two places at the same time. We're bearing witness on the earth, but we're receiving that same place out of heaven. And so we're functioning as, that, as a gateway of heaven on earth. That's why we stand as witnesses. So <clears throat> when it comes to the angelic, you know, get to know what's around you. Get to know what's, what's assigned to your life, what's assigned to your destiny. What's the sign? You know, the best, play, the best place to start is discern the spirit of God in your life. Discern your own spirit when in prayer, when you're praying. Like, what does your spirit feel like, spirit man feel like? Discern it and then start discerning the angelic around you. And so when you start being able to discern how the angelic moves around you and what's present, then you can start releasing, um, decreeing or releasing that angel to be fully released in their assignment and go forth. And so <clears throat> you can start seeing a lot of change. Now, change doesn't happen automatically. You know, Daniel, it took three mm -hmm. weeks, even though he had, he had Michael and Gabriel assigned to his revelation, he still had to break through. Those yep. guys, those archangels had to break through for him. And it says that, that it, um, Gabriel comes in and says that the only one that stood with him was Michael, your prince. Now, why is that? <clears throat> why was Michael the only one that stood against the opposition that was coming against, Gabe, uh, against Daniel? It wasn't because the other angels didn't want to join in. It was because Daniel's prayers were so committed that it released Michael in a sustainable way to be able to break through with Gabriel to release the revelation. Mm. Because Michael was assigned to, to Daniel because of <clears throat> Daniel's assignment for Israel. And Israel is Michael's assignment, right? So we have to understand that our stand in prayer releases the fullness of the angelic. And so a lot of times when it comes to the angelic and building an atmosphere, you have to build it, it you know, there, there, there's spiritual laws, there's, 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 there's dimensions that you can open up in, in, in the angelic within three weeks, and then there's six weeks, and there's ten weeks, and then so on, and you can begin to build and build and build, and if you really were to go for that, I mean, Bob Jones used to say you could open up a gateway in three weeks, mm. you know, so, so yeah. there's so many, uh, so many things that you can do in the spirit, just seek the Lord about it. <laughs> Ooh, you preaching, you preaching, come on, hey, Baba.